you knew the warnings. Every town has a place best ignored. The places on the periphery where dark deeds linger. Every town has a beast to avoid. The monsters who attack when you stray from the path. Every town has a superstition to be obeyed. The rights to keep the darkness at bay. You knew the warnings. You came anyway. Welcome to Solemn Vale, a lovely place to spend a day or to stay forever. I'm Tyler, Elder Jekyll's on Twitter, and I'm your storyteller for this tale of masochism and fresh apple cider. Before we continue, we'd like to remind you that due to the mature themes of horror and violence explored in our tale, we encourage listener discretion. We are horrible tales, and we play a wide assortment of games seven days a week, sometimes twice a day. To know more about our many games, be sure to check the calendar on horribletales.com to stay up to date with all of our shows. The Discord link on the website, and come get alerted every time something comes around. Follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash horribletales, YouTube youtube.com slash c slash horrible tales where we have hundreds of previous episodes you can watch a very special thanks tonight to Helmgast, me you epidemic sound dark somnium and myself for providing all the music you'll hear thanks to roll 20 tabletop for providing an excellent virtual platform for us to run many of our games and last but not least a warm thanks to our listeners and fans for tuning in and experiencing this story with us with me are those who are already lost but just haven't realized it yet Residents of the Vale, let the audience know who you are once again. Hey there, uh, this is Eric. Uh, I'm at Modern Recluse Online, and I will be reprising the role of Fernando de Luca. Hello, everybody. It's me, Am Changeling, Ambrose. You can find me as that all over the internet and on Etsy at Thornkind. And uh, tonight I will be reply. Re- 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 I come back to you as my hippy dippy rain. I think that's me. Uh, oh, hey, it's me, K of the She and They Variety. I am at Critical K with two K's on the bird app and the interwebs in general. And tonight I will be replacing Axel Anderson, he, him. Hello, my name is Rachel. I am Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere on the internet. And I am reprising uh, Kim. Yes, Kim Brannigan. Hello, everyone. I am Aaron. Uh, you can find me at Great Cthulhu pretty much everywhere. My pronouns are anything but he, him. Um, I'll be reprising my role as Livia Branch, whose pronouns are she, they. It just leaves me. Hey, uh, I'm Savannah. You can find me online as Miss Miss Emo Fox. I am playing the twin sister of Axel, Ingrid Anderson. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm sitting at a hot nine weird. We max out at 10. Uh, so we'll see, you know, what happens. It's fine. I totally just didn't meet the devil and uh, havoc is in my brain noggin. And now, it's recap time. I'm gonna pick a victim. No, I'm not. Ambrose, you're ready to recap. <laughs> I'm gonna say, I always recap. Oh, Chrome, don't do this to me. I had it open. And then Chrome decided to refresh for no reason. Makes me giggle every time. We will return to the hotel. Ingrid makes sure Axel cannot leave the room without her. But at nine weird, she's struggling to keep together and prays to her goddess for strength and protection. Kim takes a few shots of something stiff to quiet all the new information bouncing around her head. Rain tries to spy on Axel, worried that the other man is now evil. Bernard seeks communion at the church. He struggles with the question of, how can he combat the devil when the devil is helping him? Somehow he overhears Ingrid's prayers in his head and Ingrid hears his. Kim's phone wakes her up. It's 500 messages from the local paranormal Facebook group about everyone's equipment randomly going wild. Kim leaves an incoherent drunk response before crawling into bed. 
Meanwhile, Livia is holding court among the undergrads at the local bar. After she goes to bed, her attempt to sleep is interrupted by two young teenagers asking to use her phone. Livia gets creeped out and tries to send them away. But one says they need to call in a hurry, and Livia sees their all black eyes. She absolutely refuses to let them in. As she secures her hotel room, light fills the room. Livia glances at her watch and realizes she's lost about six hours. She calls Kim. Fuck. Half drunk Kim grumbles into the phone. Livia explains what she experienced last night. Kim fills her in on what happened last night in the cave before asking Livia to bring her some Gatorade. Axel wakes up in Ingrid's bedroom with no memory of how he got there. Ingrid similarly fills him in on his own missing time and her sense of impending doom. Axel swears he will always take care of her no matter what happens. Ingrid also reveals that she could overhear Bernardo's prayers and how conflicted he felt about Axel. It's not about them both being men, Ingrid thinks, but rather how scared the priest is to make himself vulnerable to anyone else. Encouraged by Ingrid, he goes to discuss his feelings with Bernardo. On the way over, he passes Olivia in the company of two children. Something seems strange about this. He sends a concerned text to his sister before meeting up with Bernardo. Bernardo gently but firmly does not take Axel's offered hand. And Axel stumbles through a confession of his feelings. Bernardo says he does care about Axel, but with everything they're up against, they can't risk their vulnerability being used against them. He tries to let Axel down gently, but Axel is resistant to any attempt by Bernardo to decline. The text message takes a while to reach everyone. Kim texts the group chat asking where they should meet. In the course of answering, Axel reveals he saw Olivia and two children. Well, fuck. Kim knows what that means. She explains that Olivia was visited by demon children in the night. Kim immediately calls Olivia back and is relieved when the other woman picks up. She explains what Axel told her. As Olivia makes her way over to Bernardo's room, Kim rousts Rain. Meanwhile, somehow, Bernardo slips away from Axel. When Axel and Ingrid come upon his room, they see a note on the bed. Meet it a moment, back soon, it says, with Bernardo's phone next to it. He's gone to somewhere wild and peaceful, but he's not alone. He encounters a meditating Ingrid who sighs spitefully when she hears his fiat approach. May I help you? She asks. Bernardo says he hopes he's not interrupting, but he needed to have a private discussion with her. They both want to protect Axel from being the vessel these people want him to be. He suggests someone else could take up the role. He makes it clear he has no interest in pursuing a relationship with Axel, but he knows how to strengthen the coven if he has Ingrid's support. She asks what he means, and he answers that he means to break Axel's heart. When she asks what he means, he bites an apple while locking eyes with her and suggest use their imagination. Ingrid, however, isn't as eager to do that. She suggests he tell he just tell Axel now. But they have a connection now. The conversation ends. Axel is back at the hotel, freaking out that he can't find Ingrid or Bernardo. Kim tries to calm him down. Axel is suddenly overwhelmed with visions of what Bernardo wanted from Ingrid. It's pretty graphic and explicit. He drops both phones and says he needs to go for a walk. Kim offers him a drink, but he turns her down and goes for a wandering, aimless drive. He ends up at the apple orchard, 
wanting to pick some of the apples, but then remembers these apples are evil. He starts looking for Ingrid, but ends up back at the motel. Bernardo wanders back and is surprised to find Kim, Rain, and Livia just hanging out and using his fancy Italian coffee maker. Kim says this is where they were told to meet, and Rain asks if Bernardo has one of his crystals. Bernardo makes everyone a round of macchiatos as Kim asks his plans. Kim theoretically knows how to make an angel trap. Olivia talks about being kidnapped by aliens. She knows Kim, or she shows Kim the lump at the back of her neck. Kim digs out some strangely metallic device and promptly posts the pictures to the local Facebook group. Huh, says Kim. So how do we get the aliens and angels to go to war with each other? Wait, are the angels and aliens the same thing? Olivia suggests there's a lot of folklore to support that. She hands the device over to Bernardo. The phone in his pocket goes haywire. Amethyst and orange calcite in Rain's pocket shatter. As soon as he puts the phone three feet away from the device, it stops. Somehow, Olivia ends up holding it. It feels right. Olivia feels a lot better holding this. And using the Life360 on Ingrid's phone, they figure out where Axel is. At the moment, Axel has found Ingrid. He awkwardly says he knows they were together, and Ingrid only laughs. She denies anything happened and suggests that the vision was falsely planted. It's when his phone rings. It's Ingrid calling? She answers the phone. Livia checks that they're both okay before asking them both to return to the hotel room. Somewhere, the morning star leans up against a tree and smiles as he watches his cult perform a ritual. Bernardo's uh, in the back of the room, just with his back to the wall, just sort of observing everyone as they come in. I think Axel is with his sister, with Ingrid, whoever she might be standing or sitting. Uh, a little, a little quiet, um, kind of avoiding where Bernardo is leaning. Um, as Ingrid enters and goes and sits like on the edge of the bed, um, she eyes uh, Bernardo before going and sitting down. Any more macchiatos before we begin? It's probably a good idea. Oh yes, I'd really like one. They're organic, right? See, clap. <laughs> Great. Got some. Rain puts a little oil of something in their macchiato. <laughs> it's a very strong plant-like smell. What are you? Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Kim will probably slip some bourbon into hers. <laughs> Olivia, you got them all here. Really awkward. You could cut the tension <clears throat> with, the, with the feather. 
Right, so um, we're all gathered here. Um, let's uh, formulate a plan, shall we? What do you propose? Well, it seems like there's a, a number of supernatural forces at play here. Uh, I'm sure we all agree at that about that, yes? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure all of them are uh, have aligned goals, though. While I think perhaps a ritual performed by us together as Coven could be useful, I don't know that we can take on the devil himself. Uh, Well, and maybe this was covered, and maybe this was covered in the recap. The people that were summoning in the cave, did they summon the Morning Star, or did they summon something else? Unclear. Did he? <laughs> make any indications when we spoke with him he made it seem like he wasn't the bad guy but he's the devil so yeah. i mean okay that means nothing <laughs> to ingrid so. yeah uh, he was very much like they're trying to like from what axel's visions had been like they're trying to bring about this like war of angels on humanity where all the angels like kill a bunch of shit and uh, everything like blows up he actually said that wasn't him no, he said it wasn't party. him. Yeah, it's a third party that wants to do that, and he doesn't want that. And that's how he was trying to frame himself as a good guy, being like, I don't want this war of angels on Earth. He was telling I you to... there's a second rebellion in heaven. Yes. I seem to recall the angel specifically was that of genocide. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't have the pleasure of meeting Lucifer himself, and I'm actually kind of grateful for that. He's not that special. He has teeth like this. <laughs> he just rips it. Stuff. <sighs> Lovely. Um, uh, he was quite enlightening to a few of us. I'll bet. I'd make a, I'd make a reference to the parable about the serpent and the apple, but I'm I'm fairly certain that's actually an allegory of Christian Christians try to convert uh, pagans from the snake cult. But you know, I think the the uh, example applies here anyway. Those poor snakes, they had a whole cult. Now they don't. No, they still. Do. Oh. I always thought it was a metaphor for growing up. Oh, I thought that snakes just really liked witchcraft. Oh, we're talking about two different things, aren't we? I, so maybe we could try to track down any of the people that might have been there last night. Maybe the church has a, a line, so to speak, um, on any other spiritual groups in the area? You know, uh, sister, that the orchard and the apples that it provides creates a uh, something that is not well. Perhaps we could start at one of those orchards. Kim, uh, you you did say you could make an angel trap, maybe. Remind the player what that entails you got me rachel <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can't remember <laughs> we never actually detailed what the devil trap was gonna be so you can just allude to whether you think you can or not or if rachel the player wants to you can just throw some words out there like throw some cram at it 
But I, oh. I, I was going to mostly be like, we're just going to roll for the ritual, and then we're not going to talk too much about how you trap the devil. Uh, well, so the thing about the thing about angels is that they don't have free will. They are bound by their natures, uh, the way the creator made them. So if we know an angel's nature, we can use that to manipulate it and thereby trap it. You're proposing right. to put to concoct a trap for Lucifer. I was actually not going to suggest Lucifer. That seems uh, risky. Ill-advised is still what I would use. <laughs> um, I, I was cons- I was considering one of his siblings, however, one that when that spoke in my head not too not too long ago. I thought it was something pretending to be Uriel, but it could actually, since we've progressed now to the literal devil being here, it it could also literally be Uriel that was speaking to me. Do you think we could trap them with shiny things? Uh, They're the angel of shiny things, sure. Hmm. Uh, uh, Sorry. (laughs) Um... Was there anything left in the um, cave that could be like called upon? What do you mean called upon? I have powers from the devil to use if I have things. Um, Like, was there anything left of said ritual to like either prove or disprove by using my powers. Um, uh, who was that? The cave is no longer relevant because you wrecked the summoning area. The part you did on purpose. You went through and, and defiled the shit out of it. Wow. Terrified. You broke the summoning circle. You burned the stuff inside of it. You can still do stuff, but nothing in the cave is relevant. Okay. Except that it's still scary as fuck. Cool, cool, cool. I can put in some calls to the church and find out if they have any um, information about any of the other groups that may be responsible for this. That all comes down to the fact that you know the devil's cult is that really weird family and all the people that always go to the one orchard. We have a name for the family? Uh, we did, yeah. <laughs> uh, in April. Uh, ah. <laughs> it's an actual uh, Colin Vale family, so insert fancy name here. Rothschild. Roth's teenager. Roth uh, teenager? <laughs> I remember oh, Happy Jerry. Acres. Yeah, Happy Acres was the name of the farm. And... Uh, it's almost like a commune, like Castadega in Florida, or similar oh, places. Oh, I love a good commune. Um, but you all know they've been doing weird shit to the apples, which affects people in town. You saw it firsthand with the bartender downstairs in the hotel that one session. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that's his cult because you tried to spy on it over the wall. But you don't know if they're the good guys or the bad guys. But in the end, it all comes down to the cider. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, What's insider? Apples and fermentation. Mm. And suffering. <laughs> I think Axel's just sitting next to his sister and he puts a hand on his own thighs and just presses the back of his palm into the Silas he's still wearing. Just <laughs> trying to get through this very awkward time in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward? Why is it awkward? So fucking awkward. Oh. I thought it was fine. It's totally fine. Uh, is it required? I'm, I'm not technically in your coven. Would it be best if I just go to the room? No, you're going to stay here with us while we can keep eyes on you. Alright, then. 
I don't think it's safe for you to be alone, Axel. All right. All right. It's okay, Axel. We'll keep a good eye on you. Oh, I forgot Rain was creepy as shit and tried to murder somebody on the car ride home. <laughs> yeah, and Axel just like, Axel, yeah. yeah, Axel just scooches like a little closer to his sister. So the leg that doesn't have the Silas is like touching hers. Like, it's like I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just stay right close to you. Stranger <laughs> danger. <laughs> um, I forgot they had a personality shift. I also forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> it all came flooding back to me as soon as he started talking like that. I was just like, oh, oh yeah. Yep, creepy, creepy times. Um, all right, I'm going to, uh, maybe we don't need a trap, Yurio. Let's, let's try a gamble. Um, let's, uh, Hold hands, I'll, I'll lead us. I'm gonna try and summon Uriel. Uh, before you try this, I just want to point out Uriel is the angel of death. I'm aware. Okay. I feel, I feel like that's a good ally against the Morning Star, don't you? <laughs> I don't... We want an ally against the Morning Star? I mean, I don't think he's that special, but apparently Ingrid really likes him. I would have chosen Michael per personally, but whatever. I'm not inclined to. Sorry, please, Sorry. Ingrid. No, I was just, I don't, I'm not, like, I don't think he's special. I'm just, I and Axel don't put as much belief. And you know, and the person who just stood in front of us uh, for no reasons whatsoever, um, he's just not, you know, part of our little, our belief system. I but, understand. You know. I, I, I considered myself somewhat just spiritual, I suppose. But um, based on the events of the past, you know, couple days, I think it's time to reevaluate our belief systems a little bit, just a little bit. And playing into their uh, into their belief systems is not necessarily a bad thing, um, especially especially the Morning Star, who's known for his vanity. <laughs> hmm. Before you begin the uh, ritual, Miss Lydia, Miss Branigan, may I have a word in private, please? Uh, sure. Goes outside, outside the door. Whatever is going to happen in there, whatever is going to occur, there is a good chance that one of us will be possessed by this thing that these uh, people want to bring into this world, this um, angel of genocide. If something like that happens, I need assurances that you will need to do what needs to be done if I or the others cannot do that. I understand you come from a long line of hunters. This is not correct. Yeah, I mean, as much as anyone can. I mean, we don't have a great survival rate. Uh, but, um, yeah, look, I, I know what you're asking. I'll do it. They might not let me, but I'll, I'll do my best. A hunter's word is as good as anything. Grazie. Yeah, absolutely. I hope it doesn't come to that, though. So do I. And now he'll go make himself back inside. Yeah. Yes! Which probably means I want this to happen. <laughs> Yeah, tell us about your ritual. Make it weird. Uh, so she uh, takes the jacket off and rolls her sleeves up so she can uh, 
write Enosian symbols all over her arms. Oh, not write, sorry. Uh, carve them in slightly, but not making anything vital. Um, uh, has everyone hold hands and then... Um, Miss she's, not as, she's not necessarily opening herself. <laughs> to uh, Miss, do you have Axel take part in this or is this a coven only thing? Um, I, I think just because you're here, you can take part in it. It's fine. I'm sure the fact that you're not part of the coven will not factor in any fashion. Oh, totally not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <clears throat> but yes, uh, I, then I, I say I need everyone to fixate on uh, a poignant moment of death for you specifically, one personal to you. I want you to live in that moment, and then I'm going to call for Uriel. Can and I don't, I don't, I don't mean, I don't mean a casual memory. I want you to remember watching someone pass in front of you, if you can. Oh, okay. Because I was just gonna, you know, remember, you know, the death of my innocence when I walked in on my brother with, you know, Bernardo. Uh, no, <laughs> not 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 metaphorical, uh, literal, please. Can we please not right now? We have an audience question. Yeah. Does <laughs> not find the collar, or is it symbolic that it's missing? <laughs> Who is this question directed to? You. You. <laughs> I never wore a collar in this game. <laughs> I think people are like crossing their streams here They're because I didn't play a, a priest. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a mage in the White Walls game before it became Vast Asian that yes. uh, wore a collar, but he doesn't wear a collar anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rain used to wear a collar. Wow. Nice. What? He did. No, you had a you had a big old collar. It was spiky one. You had a spiky one. Jai, I thought I just had my crystal. You had a thick ass collar. <laughs> Jesus which, Christ. Fair, which to be fair was because it was new at the time and you enjoyed it. Anyway, um, so this so ritual. Death. <laughs> this is so dead. I, th I, I, I think we made it nice and weird out of game. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what shows up is 100% Julian Richings in the suit. All the way. Feel free to Google if you're not familiar with Supernatural. Uh... Like, Ooh, you complete wow. the ritual, and you all sit back and wait about five minutes, and then there's a knock on the door. And it's like, one rap, and it echoes. And the second rap, three seconds later, it echoes. And the third come rap, in. three seconds later, and it echoes real bass-like. They come in. The door creaks I'll... open real slow, and even though it's a hotel room door to a new hotel, it creaks like it's an old creepy house door. He stands there looking ominous in his black suit and gaunt face. Then he cracks up, smi uh, cracks up smiling and snickering and says, that gets him every time. He walks in and kicks the door shut behind him. Called? Yes. <laughs> we had some questions for you. He summoned death to ask questions. Well, I guess a favor in this case is probably better. <laughs> You're the one who reached out to me first, for the record. I'll be reaching out for all of you sooner or later. I'm just uh, kidding, what do you want? <laughs> uh, first, are, are you part of this second war in heaven? Sly smile. Why do you ask? Immediately distracted by Axel, who he finally notices for the first time. Uh, Hello. Oh, look at you. Slow up and down look. Snickers. <laughs> You're so fucked. That happened Anyways, the other day. Won't be anymore. 
I wanted to know if you're part of this genocide or if you're a neutral party or a third party. So who told you about that? I can neither confirm nor deny the Morning the Star. Of the third war Star? Yeah. What did Lucy tell you? I'll, I'll uh, look. I'll look to Ingrid for this. <laughs> um. He, I mean, honestly speaking, uh, he probably gave Kim more because he made Kim's brain melt, but, um, He's insert- his breath about how dumb a morning star is as a weapon. Go ahead and talk. Uh, well, no, I was just like, uh, insert information that the morning star gave us because that was four months ago and fuck if I can remember. Man, the blue slips can sink ship, right? Am I right? Huh? He could sink my shit. Anyway, um. Man, what a dead crowd. Ah! I know you appreciate that, right? Points to Crystal, lady. Points for rain, though. No. Crystal, dude. Dude. <laughs> the voice always gets me. Not to be rude, but are you going to be helpful for us or are you just going to crack poorly made puns? wound me to death. Ah! <laughs> See what I did there, points to Bernardo. You get it. <laughs> get on with it, please. Um. Can you help us with him? I can, but neither of you two cuties summoned me. She did turns back to Livia. Yes. Um, I guess we'll cut to the meat of it. I have a question. No, no, I prefer that you cut to the bone. What, what's your question, Crystal Kid? Do angels like shiny things? Oh, yeah, we do. You know what's really shiny? Souls. Yes, they are. Mm. And yours is real sparkly, Crystal Kid. Well, thanks. Um, uh, so yes, uh, I under no circumstances trust Lucifer or, well, most supernatural entities, no offense. Oh, you should um, never trust an angel. Our boss makes us lie out our asses all the time. I figured of most angels, though, the angel of death had less reasons to lie since your job is to harvest us, technically. Oh, you mean because you're nothing but but soul energy in a meat suit? I mean, that's true. Yeah. So I'm not interested in allying myself. Too. I'm not interested in allying myself with Lucifer, who's traditionally known for lying out of his ass constantly. Or... He lies out of every orifice. And I'm not particularly interested in being part of a genocidal angel war either. So I'd like your help. I want to stop whatever's happening here. Uh, I don't like working. Fine, what are we doing? Well, there's definitely a cult at work here. I have to assume they have something to do with it. I don't know if that's Lucifer's cult or a different angel's cult. It's definitely not Asrid. You know, the other angel of death. Wow, you guys don't know nothing, do you? Did you even I know mean... that one of his chief servants is in that kid? Points at Axel. Excuse me? Yeah, it's right there. Um, you're just what pointing part at of Axel does he point at? Does he point at a particular section? Yes. He's used recently. His penis? His, his crotch? <laughs> <laughs> My penis holds a devil. Angel. Wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking with you. It's right there in your soul. Oh. Uh, Which is basically I, your central nervous system. Sort of. It's complicated. Is, oh, I, you can I'm remove those from people. Like the central nervous system, and then you can hang it on some Spanish moss, and it'll be fine. <laughs> um, I think you're confused. 
I'm just fine. It's, it's just Axel, me. the arrogance of talking to literal death and saying they're confused. I mean, that's he's just, my brother. He's just a. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I should, he's not that special. I should. I should have. You should have just led. You should have led you into the forest to go meet the Fae. Then you can tell me how not special they are too. I'm not that special. I'm just mm -hmm. an angel. You're not that special. You're just a meat sack. Watch. He waves his hand, and you have the black flag now at an advanced stage, Axel. Um, I fucking fall on the floor dying. Yes, you do. Um, He's like, no. When uh, Ingrid goes to react, no, no. Wait, watch. Wait, trust me. Trust death. I've got your best interest at heart. Hold on, trust me. Uh, 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 One more second. Wait, there it comes. And then just as uh, Axel is starting to choke to death, unless anyone tries to intercede. Uh, I'm going to How? trust death. I'm not wow. like <laughs> touching touching to... someone with the bubonic plague is the worst idea ever. I'm just gonna put it out there. <laughs> I'm not touchy. Not. I am no touchy. And if Bernardo tries to touchy, he's also no touchy. Um, I'm going to quote. I'm gonna trust death because I mean, what else am I supposed to do at this point? Because uh, I can't see him. So join him. Rain will plop a crystal right on. She <laughs> Axel's chest. You just drop. You don't touch. You just drop it on me, and it goes. Yes. Like, oh. It makes a boil burst. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh. <laughs> just as Axel is about to collapse, there's this uh, really high pitched sound, like if you had tinnitus in a flash of light. And then the body of Axel shudders, and the disease begins to retract and disappear rapidly. The eyes turn jet black. And then Axel sits up, looks directly at Uriel, and starts talking in a language. Unless any of you want to tell me you speak Anaki, and none of you understand. I mean, did that come with the info dump that I got from the Morning Star? Oh, yeah. I, do, I don't think... I don't think Livia speaks it, but knows some words. <laughs> Death, mine. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I. <laughs> uh, to the rest of you, Uriel gets real serious at that point, and they have an intense conversation. To you two, uh, there's a lot of divine expletives. It seems hmm. from the smatterings you can catch, because they're going fast, and neither of you are truly fluent, uh, that Uriel is definitely not on the side of this rebellion. Uriel was never on the side of any rebellion. Uriel just wanted to do their goddamn job. And everyone's Perfection. always making it fucking hard. And everyone's always after that goddamn sight because apparently it's special. Uh. Is Axel back to normal now, or is he still like bubonic plaguey? He's fine. He's uh, just, you know, black eyed and speaking Enochian to the other angel. Oh, okay. Both of you do react possibly with surprise, possibly not. When Uriel says he doesn't even have it because those bastards stole it, he didn't say it, he mm. says those bastards stole Orcus. Apparently, Orcus Death is the site that Thanatos wields from Greek mythology. Interesting. Ah. Uh, Orcus. L Livia is making mental adjustments to her syllabus for the next year. Priorities. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're thinking that far ahead. <laughs> she's always she's a professor at heart. After a few more minutes of that conversation, and both of them accusing the other, clearly neither knows where the site is and both want it. The entity inside of Axel retracts, and it's just Axel again, but this time Axel, you remember everything. You can feel the entity try to wipe your memory like the last few times. Then Uriel locks eyes with you, and all the mind fog is gone, and you remember everything you did when you were, you were yourself. Oh, that's not great. Wow. 
I said those things to like the devil. Oh, but maybe. Uh, I think I think we've had enough of that, Axel. Uh, stop, okay? <laughs> Just. You know they just... make adult toys out of crystals too. I'm good, Rain. Thank you. I'm just. They do. You want to know how many people have died because of those? It's a lot. And Axel just leans his forehead on his sister's shoulder and just mutters, "This trip was a terrible mistake." I think <laughs> it's turning out quite an interesting trip. I also enjoy this just to put just to position of Kay not trying to flirt with everyone, and I think it's hilarious. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so uh, the bits and pieces I was able to pick up. Uh, we're, this is bad. This is all really bad. Do I know what they spoke about? Like, if I remember, do I understand it? Only your side of the conversation. So this thing in me doesn't have Orcus and no, this thing hey, boss that? doesn't have Orcus. Oh, great boss, Azrael. His boss, Azrael, the other oh, angel of leading death. rebellion, the second rebellion. Oh, okay. So, Azrael's going to war with the Morning Star in the third angel world war. No, Azrael's after God. He doesn't give a fuck about the devil. Oh, then what does the devil have to do? Do you do, you... do you say that out loud as the character, or is that Savannah? Yeah. No, yeah, I'm... Ingrid says that. Ingrid says that. Well, then Uriel would answer you and say, because God and the devil have an arrangement. Haven't you read the book? He lets them in, they make bets over people, like they're fucking coins on the fucking poker table. They're both assholes. You're... Asriel ain't gonna work that way. The devil likes the way he's got it. So is the devil here then to stop the Yeah, but he ain't tough enough on his own. That's real fucking scary. Then the other humans probably didn't summon. Lucy's all like everyone's all like Lucy's the worst. He's Lucifer. Oh my god, he's not even really talked about that much in the book. He's light. Azrael is literally death. Who do you think's gonna win? Flashlight? Doom. Can I ask gently what's inside of me that I am keenly aware of now and it feels kind of strange? Balor Evil. Her, her, I... Balor her name is Balor Fine. Um, uh, how? Wait. Balor Fine? Balor Fine. Balor Fine. B A L E R F A P H O N. How long has Balor Fine been with my brother? Days. Oh, okay. So, like, not forever. Oh, okay, cool. That's no, cool. No, yeah. Si since he fucked a priest in the church. No, wait. I'm not sure who was getting fucked. Since the priest fucking happened in the church. At this point, Bernardo will start speaking in Latin. It's to not all the that. Angel of death. Not all that uh, out of the ordinary. I don't know what to tell you. It actually just apple red. Uh, at this huh. point, Bernardo will speak uh, to the angel of death in Latin. Okay, uh, and, you tell him. Um, yeah. Them. For Uriel, Listen. it's definitely a them, but presenting mail for this scene. Yeah. Listen. No more, answer no more questions for him. What, what we need to know right now is how to stop this genocide from taking place. And if it involves getting this Orcus back, and oh, so be it. Mr. Bossy Pants. Lucky your cue. Find my side. Where was it last seen? Well, he's saying this in Latin. <laughs> Where? Who has Glorious it? Glorious accent, too. Shut up. And, like, he, he looks at you, uh, Bernardo, and he's like, you know, your Latin accent is like you're trying to talk posh British, but you sound like you're from Wales. Just answer the question. I don't know. Lucy's cult probably has it. Because, you know, it wasn't Lucy they were summoning. No, it was the angel of genocide. Mm -hmm. He has no idea they subverted him. Or maybe he does. I don't know. Can't figure Lucy out. 
No, he knows. And now we are working hand in hand with the devil to stop this from happening. Um, Not much different from working hand in hand with God. How do I get this thing out of me, please and thank you? I could kill you. The power of Christ, obviously. <laughs> oh, uh, he like looks to Bernardo for a second and then immediately looks away. I think that got us into this. So, is what's partially possessing Axel an angel? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, yeah. It was. What is it now? Oh. The boss man stops calling us angels when we reveal. Oh. Fair. Um. Because then you lose your grace. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well. Lucy. Depends on who's in charge, too. Because right now, we're angels because y'all believe in God the most. He didn't always mean this, though. Um, well. I told you they were going in the same. <laughs> to find out who's looking. You made some of my powers more potent? They used to call Lucy Loki once. You should have seen what he did when he was forced. Anyways. Um. <laughs> So, if we can get them out, then we can put it into something and lock it in there. Should work. Axel's pretty good at in and out. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes, yes, he is. Um, anyway. So, Bernardo, your good at exercising. See. Um, Rain, can I... What would you say is your most potent crystal for keeping things locked in? Oh. Um, probably kyanite or um, mm. Granite, or um... I think granite would be fine. Do you have some on you? I always have things on me. True. There you go. What? Okay, I'm just, okay. I was just wondering what pocket you're going to pull it out of. Okay, so I have a piece of granite. I want to work with Bernardo to get whatever is in Axel in the granite, and I want to then ward it with my new powers, so it can't get out. Okay. Okay. You were muted, but I'm gonna. You said okay, and I heard you because we're four feet away from each other. <laughs> yeah. So we. I heard his okay. I don't know if it made it. I it's heard fine. it as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bernardo will just flash a look at Kim when he goes over to uh, a, a knowing uh, look, like prepare yourself, and then goes over to Ingrid. Starts uh, getting his vestments ready. She whispers, no funny business. <laughs> uh, I think Axel, as they're sort of prepping, is going to go over to Uriel. Uh -huh. What I do, and he like sort of holds his hand out and like reaches for like a bit of shrubbery that's in this room. And like, you know, it's this little, it's like a hex, it's essentially death. And, life draining he sort of does angels uh, don't have genitals axel you're barking up the wrong tree <laughs> i'm not trying to sleep with him but thank you very much kim i mean i can it's, grow one I, i'm not interested thank you <laughs> i as I a think we made the witch ah. as a witch i fall under your domain hmm. uh. Wish, wish is worshiping me. Bunch of punk rock morons. Not that punk my, rock's bad. Punk rock is great, but they're morons. You don't worship dead. But my powers are death aligned. Okay. If 
if I did worship a, not a form of you, a Norse form of you, can you, would that mean that I wouldn't be serviceable for, he like points at his chest, this? What do you want me to do with your nipples? Hey. I think that I think that whatever it is, Bernardo did it better. Never mind, Jerio. I'm just gonna sigh and like take a seat in the corner as they go to prepare this ritual. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he'll whip out. Um, old Bible, I, I would imagine, and it's all in like ancient Aramaic or so. I don't know, whatever. He like he'll he'll get the uh, the holy water and like he'll start getting all the different uh, things arranged in the room so that he can perform a, an exorcism essentially, and he'll give anybody uh, everybody a chance to leave the room if they need to. Otherwise, he'll he'll commence whenever Ingrid's ready. Um, I kind of. While Bernardo's setting up, uh, Ingrid takes a moment to like sit on the bed and kind of like in the middle, kind of meditate for a moment to kind of just search her own memories and now some of her new information to make sure she has like the strongest um, rune to put on this granite that's going to house um, this entity. Says, you guys look like you got this. Gotta go. Snaps his finger and turns into <laughs> black smoke. Just straight up, straight down into Livia's mouth, very dramatically. Huh. Nice. Livia that? collapses for and her legs hammer the floor for a second, and then she gets up and brushes herself off like nothing happened. Olivia? Yes. <laughs> Are you? Do you have a passenger like Axel now? Uh, I think this is a little different. Okay. Are you okay? I'm, I'm just fine. Impressive. Also, I don't, I don't, I don't think uh, it looked like that when something went inside Axel. No, no I don't think it did. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna focus. <laughs> Uh, before he begins, uh, Bernardo will go over and uh, sit down next to Axel and just gently place his hand on, on Axel and just kind of lean in and uh, whisper, like... Livia's everything. going to mind Bernardo. <laughs> Whoa, what? what? So there's like a Livia here and a Bernardo here? <laughs> okay. Oh, as soon you're, as you're Livia like... touches your shoulder... You feel like you haven't slept in three days, you're starving, and you really have to pee, and you watch Livia de-age. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, I <laughs> I thought I was going to help. No, you just... <laughs> what were you saying, Bernardo? Uh, he like, reaches for a water bottle from like the hotel stand that costs 30 bucks. <laughs> hmm. He's like, uh, we're doing this because of you. You understand? <laughs> Everyone in this room Sorry. cares for you in one way or the other. Your sister, even myself. I don't. <laughs> he looks over at, at Rain with, like, daggers. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> Bernardo, I appreciate the sentiment. My sister loves me. And as you made it very clear, um, you don't need any vulnerabilities. So it's clear you do not wish to care for me. Uh, Rain, I think, wants to murder me. Uh, and Kim and Livia are probably both just equally interested in whatever demonic god, angel, fervor, one out of curiosity and academic guys and the other because it's yes. her mission, her job. I don't pretend to understand, so don't. Hey, Demon is also talking. Don't pretend 
you care when I know you don't want to. You can't have it both ways. But Livius is much more entertaining. Hmm. Perhaps you're right. I suppose we'll see. I wish I wasn't. And he'll sort of stand up and pull out of your grip. Walk over towards his sister. And I'll begin the uh, the ritual with Ingrid, you know, whatever. I'll we'll let uh, Ingrid proceed unless uh, she wants him to uh, to begin. Well, and how, how oh. you need to get it out for us to get it in the thing. So I think we have to tag team. <laughs> <laughs> My brother. Uh, nice. Okay. <laughs> tag team. That'll be a new one for Axel, won't it? <laughs> Is it not too late for us to just leave this town? <laughs> uh, yes, it is too late for us to leave. Um, so, we need to... Uh, how, so how observant uh, was Bernardo during that whole conversation? Observant to what? Uh, to Axel. Um, very. Uh, as a matter of fact, that when uh, Axel was, you know, choking or whatever, like, he was using every strength to not just, like, you know, get up and do something. Like, he was visibly sweating and shit, like, mm -hmm. fiddling with something in his hand, like, uh, like so wrestling with this whole thing. A lot of his time, he keeps pressing his hand into that Silas a lot. <laughs> just, like, he'll take mm. it off for a second, and then just some other bullshit will happen. It's just press. Like, yeah. Oh, good. That's Bernardo's he's proud. A lot of use. <laughs> he's getting a lot of use. So... Pull the entity out of Axel and into the crystal will be a group effort. A group ritual. Hmm. You can all pitch in your creepy little tidbits. Uh, you can all contribute too because the difficulty is 25. Fuck. Remember, this is a game where normally you get a single D6. Unless you, pull, unless you burn weird. However, you can all contribute to this one, which, if you don't burn weird, gives you 66. Which would give you an average success rate of not 25. I will absolutely burn weird for this. Uh, I'm only at three anyway, so. I cannot burn weird for this. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got no weird to burn. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> and I just have to hope that nothing goes terribly wrong and it doesn't give me more. So, okay. So you said we're rolling six D6? Yeah. Well, 66 you if you don't burn. D6 plus whatever weird you spent. Well, what, what, what if I burn soul? Yes, then you can also yeah. add dice that way. Okay. I would like to burn soul to help. Same. I'm burning. So spend your weird burn, whatever uh, attributes you want, roll your dice pool, and contribute your result. Can I burn body? Like, as I'm, you know, doing this, I'm just kind of like, ah, ah, I'm just like hitting the, the Silas. What one, successes one. again? Uh, well, DC's 25, so in this case, you're just totaling up your results. So, like, give me each individual. Oh. Oh. Oh, so you just want the total? I'm no, spending a weird... Or time, rather, so. I, I'm gaining a weird and spending a soul. Um, I rolled a 5 and a 6. Okay. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, yes? Um, what about Axel? Is he rolling since he's yes, because he performed Axel's will matters as much as your ritual. Okay, what is is will the same thing? Is it weird or is it's it? It's just a D6 for a solemn veil unless you burn an attribute or spend a weird. Okay. Uh Olivia, what'd you get? Individual I got a twelve. Dice. What are your individual dice? Uh six four two. Uh Rain. Uh, I rolled that in roll 20, and that was a 2, a 5, a 4, and a 6. What did you do to yourself? What? Everything in that crystal. Kim, what'd you get? <laughs> uh, I burned a point of soul to roll an extra die, and I rolled a 6. 
Uh, I'm going to burn uh, body and soul. Uh, so for two extra dice, and I want weird. Uh, so I have three currently. Uh, I'll get it up to six. Does that mean I roll three extra dice? Yeah. Okay. One second. And then give me each individual roll. Okay. One second. So that's three more. So I'm at six dice. Okay. I got 21 total. I got a four, a six, a five, a three, a two, and a one. Okay. We're going to see if poor life choices are about to happen. Radically <laughs> poor life choices in a Vorpal Tales game? Never. Never. <laughs> that should just be our tagline. Vorpal Tales games. Poor life choices. <laughs> now in TTRPG form. And I think Axel uh, is going to pause for a moment and look at his sister. Don't you dare. <laughs> Ingrid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you want most? In this what do I want most? I mean, Axel, we haven't even graduated college yet. I'm not thinking that far ahead. I guess. Uh, a cat that doesn't eat my computer cords while I'm streaming. <laughs> you stream? <laughs> when did that happen? Check out her uh, OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Apple content. It we, is. Could a, we could have had a it's much nicer apartment juicy. if I'd known you did OnlyFans. We did until somebody stole it. Anyway, unrelated. Um, <laughs> um, what do I want most? I don't know. I guess a family to continue on our family line and someone who enjoys the genetics of apples as much as I do. Do you like a butterfly? <laughs> oh. And no, Bernardo is not suddenly into the genetics of apple trees, I promise. <laughs> Axel just rolls his eyes and leans back. Hey, Tyler. Hmm. Okay. You complete your ritual. You're muted. Oh. Okay, didn't get to hear me laugh. You complete your ritual, but nothing happens to Axel. However, Bernardo collapses to the floor and foams at the mouth, eyes roll back in the head, and actually, uh, when the convulsions mm -hmm. begin, floats off the ground about six inches. An unearthly howl escapes his mouth. Okay. And after, and before any of you have time to react, black smoke starts pouring out of his eyes and his ears and his mouth. And goes into the crystal. It takes a solid five minutes. And when it's done, he collapses to the ground. Immediately, uh. his color is better. He's flushed. He looks healthier even though he's unconscious. 
Axel sort of there than he was. Axel sort of goes over to him and says, "Oh my God, no!" That oh. huh, Bernardo, and he's just gonna like, like he's tap, 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 tap in his face. Tap, 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 tap. You wake up from the best dream you've had in a long time, Bernardo, and uh, you are exquisitely alone inside yourself. It's gone. Inside my what? Inside yourself. It's gone. The thing that's been whispering to you for years is gone. It's just you. He gets up and, and just sort of like holds onto the wall and, and just kind of like takes a deep breath. Uh, it's gone. It's gone. And he just kind of starts stumbling out of the room for a moment like he's going to need to just uh, have some a moment to understand what this means. <laughs> oh. I will fix that dreadle. We didn't turn a channel point rewards back on. Oh, oh no, no, Dre wants to. No, Dre, you can't, can't spend points. Sorry. <laughs> nope, not tonight. Nope, nope. Sorry, Dre, no points. Just me biting an apple. Enjoy. <laughs> Look, just just because you know where they're headed doesn't mean you can deny them. <laughs> I can try. Uh, just pick a game and because then there aren't any solid veil ones in there and I'll make it happen. <clears throat> I have the same powers as Tyler. I can turn it back off. Uh, <laughs> Livia, mouth opens. But it's Uriel's voice that comes out. Oh, yeah. Well, wouldn't have worked on Axel anyways. You know how you always hear sometimes like there's the stages of possession, right? Uh huh. There's oppression. And then they actually try to possess you, and then they do possess you, and then ultimately either they're exercised, you die, or looks at Kim, like looking to the star people. Rachel does not know the correct answer to what okay, question Kim is. Wouldn't either. Or you choose to become one, and it becomes permanent. There's a word for that in the Catholic Church, isn't there? It looks at Bernardo. Bernardo left. Oh, he's gone. He's in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to enlighten us? Ariel? As Tyler has to Google the name. Because it was in my notes five months ago. Uh, sister, just... I'm really tired. Uh, mm. I don't know if you saw, but Livia like lost 10 years and now I was really thirsty and now I'm very hungry and tired. Uh, and he's puts you on the bed, pushes your head onto the pillow, tucks you in and goes after Bernardo <laughs> after Uriel gives me the name, which wouldn't have taken this long. Bernardo is just kind of like uh, in the room or whatever uh, or in the bathroom just like uh, looking at himself and like looking directly into his own eyes like looking for something that isn't there perhaps so he probably is a bit startled when you come in or whatever what are you doing here? Me? What? What did we do? His... Is Axel, uh, did it oh, work? Axel, no, no. It worked. Just not an Axel. What? What happened? You. I don't know how to put this nicely, um, but you collapsed on the floor and black tenderly smoke came out of you into my, my piece of granite. Um, which is stowed away in my pocket. Um, and then you woke up and ran out of the room. So... It didn't work. Oh, no. uh, I would imagine that Bernardo's kind of like seriously torn about not having that voice in his head anymore. 
So one half of him would be like, give, give me the, give it to me. No, no. <laughs> yes, give it to me now. He no. His hand. No. Why would I give you the thing that was possessing you? Maybe it's, that's with all the, all the. And then something happens, Bernardo. A still small voice in the back of your head. And all the crushing guilt from your sin. But also a sense of forgiveness from that still small voice. I didn't hear you. What you said? What were you saying? I... But also a sense of forgiveness from that still small voice. Oh. Oh, so <laughs> you can still hear God. That's good. <laughs> Apparently. He kind of like reaches out for it, and then like when he hears the voice, he kind of like pulls his hand away, and he's like, "It didn't work. What are we going uh, to do?" Well, it looks like we end up helping you instead. So, no, 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 your brother. What do we do about him? Well, Uriel said that wouldn't have worked anyway, so. I think he was just having fun watching through Livia. Bastardo, he says, and he goes like running back into the room, like, come here, motherfucker, answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> Axel's just like half tucked into this bed. He's like, oh, you're, you're okay, that's good. Here, Axel, have a rock. <laughs> Subjection. Wow, that was fine. Subjection. It is when you choose to permanently connect with the demon and become one. Shit. You gave me a rock, but it changed its colors when you handed it to me. <laughs> oh no, you're Except definitely me. evil. <laughs> pink and white means evil? Yep. Yes, pink is the evilest of colors. That's true. Oh. So with this uh, voice no longer in his head, he probably feels a lot less disciplined than he, than he did before. So he's just like, as he's working his way back to the room, he's like, oh, can they, I gotta get that out of this fucking thing. And he starts like undoing the the Silas. <laughs> it's like all, you know, all bloody and shit. Uh, but he just kind of like half discards it and goes to the Uriel and just like almost un uncharacteristically grabs him by the lapels and like pushes him up against the wall. Like, listen to me, motherfucker. Ooh, kinky. You're going to tell me how to get that thing out of his body, understood? Livia, how does this make you feel? <laughs> uh, Bernardo, it's it's not just Uriel here. Shut up! Uh... <laughs> Silencio. Answer my question. Livia, do you want to talk or do you want Uriel to talk? Uh, uh, she'll let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes go black. And Livia just like pulls you in closer and is like, oh, it's so hot, baby. <laughs> I can see why you were into him, kid, to Axel. <laughs> no. And Axel like turns and looks at you and just says, no. And there's like some darkening around his irises and this dark energy reaches out towards Livia uh, burning the hand that is clutching Bernardo. Uh, he actually slaps it away and he goes, I like a sandwich as much as the next guy but maybe not right now. It does burn <laughs> Livia's hand. Livia, lose one body. Oh. Uriel doesn't care though. Uh, <laughs> Uriel looks at you. Burn oh, go ahead. Sorry, Andrew. Uh, well, after that little exchange, uh, Ingrid is behind Axel and then smacks him with a pillow. Ow! Uh, well, not actually. Wait, I. Oh, that's. I. Uh, that's. Not puts a thumb towards Axel. See? Ain't, ain't no coming out. He agreed Ooh. to let it stay forever. What? <clears throat> Axel. It only happens if you agree. You can't force it on a human. Axel. Can't force it on I mean, a human. So it, so... You could free Axel. Looks at Kim. Devious smile. Doesn't say anything else. With murder. Quiet, I said. He looks over at uh, at, at 
Uriel and he's like, no, you said it cannot be forced, but what if is it what if it is accepted? What if I can take what is inside of Axel and put it inside of myself? No! We just got nothing. Listen to me. No. There has to be a way. Or maybe Axel couldn't have agreed to something. Axel, do you want to use your words? <laughs> no. <laughs> when you have thoughts, memories, maybe. <laughs> Just a lot. It's going to be you overwhelming. Can't. I can't. I... Deal. The demon can't separate even if it wants to. Okay, that's not what I'm asking. Uh, when did Bernard. you? He's talking to Bernardo. Sorry. I know. I'm. <laughs> when did you agree? Mm-hmm. He said that no matter what came, you'd be okay. That did not answer my question, Axel. When did you agree to let insert not Angel's name here? Stay. If you need help remembering, like from the sky, like an angelic trumpet, echoing through the whole city, power goes out, windows explode. If you look, look, glance out the window, you can see people just like collapse on the street, and everyone gets two things happen. Except for Ingrid, because I can't kill characters with audience rewards. You lose one point from your lowest stat, and they gain one weird. Hmm. Because somebody has paid for ultimate doom. Ha! <laughs> one point from the lowest? Mm-hmm. Okay. And the trumpet glass came from the orchard. <laughs> I'm gonna give you... This cannot take you to zero for the attribute, and it cannot take you to ten no. for weird. Okay, So, if it would, second lowest stat. <laughs> um, so, like, put a point in like we had spent it to spend? Yep. Yeah. My lowest is actually body, and I haven't spent anything in it because I don't use it. Oh, that so was a really lowest, loud yeah. toot. Oh, my current lowest? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> it can't, it can't zero it out? <laughs> no. Correct. And okay. Go to take, take it to your second lowest. Okay. That's just... <sighs> and, you know, Axel sort of rubs his head as shooting pain goes through it. Just, let's just go. Just no. The car and go. no, I am not going to no trumpet and orchard until you tell me no, when not you agreed to let the demon stay. This still not to the orchard, to out of the Bernardo town. And both of the death angel and the demon are all like, we gotta go now. But carry on with the scene. Out of this town. Alright, I want to make sure that I understand what's going on. Axel, at some point, Consented to let an uh, angel, fallen angel, status unknown, live inside him, and now we can't get it out. Merged yes. with it, became one entity. Yeah. There is no more Axel and Angel, it's Axel Angel. All right. Axel. What Axel. is Valophon the angel of? Genocide. <laughs> I thought that was Azriel. That's Azriel. No. Oh, that's Azrael? Okay. Uh, Balfour was Genocide. The dominion that Balafon falls under, which he's not the principality of, but is under that, is uh... Hold notes. Some document. Here. Protection. Ah, that makes no sense. <laughs> That's very okay. anti Axel. <laughs> so I'm just going to throw this out there that maybe Axel's fine. Axel Fawn. I disagree. <laughs> just Axel, please. You're 
more than Axel now. I, no, honestly, I'm just a kid in college who wants to leave his creepy ass town <laughs> with my sister. Ed, do you have an angel feel to your soul? Maybe. Or maybe this is all like a really bad trip. All right. Last question. We have the angel of death in the room with us. But te technically... Right here, baby. In, in, yeah. <laughs> Olivia tr starts to talk. And Olivia <laughs> starts to talk, then Uriel takes over, then Olivia continues not realizing Uriel has taken over. It's kind of funny. All right. Just throwing it out there. If death separates the soul, I will shoot Axel in the face right now, and then Uriel brings him back. Mm. I don't think Uriel has that. I want to watch. Really don't want to. So, Get just fun, fun fact: uh, Uriel is not only the angel of death; he also the angel of time. <laughs> All right. I mean, this. Let's. You know what? Let's let's try it. Let's this... kill Axel. No. <laughs> okay. I no. Am, I. Not, oh, and like Axel is like edging towards the door. Okay, I'm not going to shoot you unless I think it will help, Axel. I promise. Uriel thinks it might work. <laughs> All right. I would like Uriel's word that if I try to kill Axel, he will bring I'm Axel I'm leaving back. this room. I am leaving this room. Oh, Ingrid gets in front of the door. Axel, if you sniff this crystal, it'll help you calm down. <laughs> oh, I'm, my I'm goodness. I'm not <laughs> sniffing your raw. I'm um, not right. I'm not hearing Uriel Ingrid. promise to bring Axel back, Ingrid and I don't think that me. being fused with- I am ready to shoot every motherfucker in this room, including myself, if I think it's necessary. Look, we have no idea if it's gonna work or not, but it's worth a try. This one, I... be, I'll get you up, give you out loud. I like okay. this kid referring to him in your head. <laughs> <laughs> Ingrid, they're going to shoot me. No, they're not. And maybe they wouldn't have to if you would tell me when you decided to join souls with a demon. I mean, just to clarify, I'm not shooting Axel because for one, I have not heard Uriel say that he will promise to bring him back. And for two, I don't think that having the angel of protection fused with your soul is in fact a bad thing. I'm not when saying ritual... it's a good or a bad thing. I'm wanting to know when. When the ritual didn't work. Uh, can't I have a, a me and you really have a, have a, a, an optional proposition. If this doesn't work, um, we'll turn Axel into a reaper. A reaper. Of what? A what? reaper. Of souls? Yeah. The hell does a, that a mean? Turn, a turn, a turn, a, I mean, and oh, apparently uh, the offer extends to you as well, Kim, if you'd like it. Cool. I really just want to go back to college because with my sister. <laughs> You're a school. fan of your work, Kim, apparently. An apple orchard and maybe find a boyfriend, girlfriend, they friend who isn't embarrassed of me. <laughs> Bernardo isn't embarrassed of you. He's embarrassed of himself. She's right. Are we doing this? Bernardo and I had a very <laughs> long conversation. And he didn't like what I had to say. <laughs> that the one where he tried to fuck you in like various positions because I got a nice little vision of all the things he was planning to do with you, which was really, I think we're on even footing for what you saw. You saw what I wanted you to see. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to strengthen your soul in the event that things went the wrong way, which as you can see, here we are. If, if you want someone to blame as to what happened with Axel, you can probably blame me. Well, Livia is quietly snickering in the corner right now. <laughs> Unrelated, definitely. <laughs> um, Bernardo, you can have your heart to heart with him later. Um, so, we're not shooting Axel. Um, Livia is probably having cute inner monologues with the angel of death, who's probably totally not her best friend now. Um, Kim, uh, we could really use your knowledge. And I guess, Rain, there's always a use uh, to throw a crystal at somebody's forehead. Um, no. That's when you, explode. you can finish your thought, but that's when you glance out the window, and you hear noise. <laughs> you see cultists. Dressed in flowery dresses, 
with little tiaras kind of like axles made out of apple blooms. Everything they're wearing is apple motif. They're clearly from the orchard. Cultists. Moving through town, breaking things and killing people. Uh, Carry on, oh. Ingrid. So, uh, I was, what I was going to say is we should probably go now, uh, before all of that happened and was described, uh, we should probably, um, band together, um, Rain, give me your strongest protection crystals, uh, and I will try my best to keep everyone safe, because this one, you can throw it. It's the heaviest. Because you're not the only one who has protection, Axel. Apparently, the devil thought it would be useful for me, too. <laughs> Is this like that one TV show about the hot brothers everyone thinks are fucking? Where they're like each different vessels in a war? Um, I'm like. definitely not um, someone Out of the room! I shove my sister out of the room! I shove my sister out of the room! <laughs> We're out of time. We need to go. Tyler just said a yes. Molotov cocktail breaks through the window. The window is already <laughs> broken from the trumpet. It just lands in the room and sets the couch on fire. Yeah, so that happens. <laughs> sister out. Sister Olivia, she, Olivia she, leaves. Ingrid out. Olivia sprints from the room. Here you go, Ingrid. It's the strongest one that I have. <laughs> That's where we take a show break. The opposite we'll of our audience. We'll be back in 10 minutes. <laughs>
turn for break. The scene belongs to you again. I have got hmm. a hand in my sister's hand and I'm just tugging her out of this Molotov cocktail hotel. Yeah, lots of running. Uh, uh-huh. um, who has the keys to the SUV? I've got the key to our car, at least. I've got the key to mine asking. as well. We have a SUV, so that should probably be Cadillac Escalade. You don't drive. Okay. Yes, we know. Who has the keys? Axel. Axel. You make it through the lobby. Up the front door to the parking lot. Where you see five people beating on your car. It's not like it's, they're beating on every car, but your car is among the cars being beaten on. I'm targeting you, but they're still in your way. Yeah. Well, don't get my Fiat so I can run them over. <laughs> um, I'm kicking on your feet oh, too. Good sir. While we are running, um, Ingrid is talking to Rain and she's asking for five different stones for um, everyone in the party, it's excluding the herself. Smoky quartz and the kyanite and the clear quartz and. Micah. Okay. That's one, two, three, four. And then uh, uh as this is going on, Axel this Axel is going to be working this newfound prime this newfound protection matter to try and protect his sister. Okay. When that becomes necessary, I will have you all. Okay. Usually so he just murders things. I'm going oh, to all in. of our cars or specifically oh, yeah. the SUV? All specifically cars. Specifically the SUV that you're oh. all going to try to pile into. But they're smashing everything in the parking lot. Also, uh, all cars are getting smashed. Is there a relatively unsmashed SUV belonging to someone else? Yeah. Yes. Cool, that's getting hot wired. Okay. <laughs> Cinematic oh, but... wiring where it actually only takes a second instead of like reality. And Axel uh, like looks longingly at the back windshield. It has this like cute little figurines of both like him and Ingrid <laughs> and like a, be- a basket of apples on their car. Uh, oh. oh my. <laughs> yeah. Bernardo, roll body because you're sprinting for your car. Yeah. All right. Body. Difficulty three. Three, two, two. Six. Only one die. Yep. Unless you want to spend something. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, get my ass hey, I rolled a three. All right. Now, Livia slash Uria will follow uh, Kim. <laughs> Since Ingrid was working on um, protection. Oh stuff charms um she figures the rest of us are going to pile into the suv she doesn't know what bernardo is doing so she takes off after bernardo to go shove a rock in his pocket <laughs> the fuck are you doing <laughs> he's yeah, like punching axel. people off as his fiat <laughs> axel goes wherever ingrid almost goes. almost clocks ingrid like oh god <laughs> um body you said check body check ingrid, axel. uh five Oh, that's a five for Ingrid. Oh. It's like slow jogging for you, sprinting after them. No, okay. Um, so Ingrid makes it up to uh, Bernardo, and she's just like, "Here, take this. Um, it should maybe keep you safe. I don't know. Maybe it'll keep you from being possessed again." Bye. And she like <laughs> kisses <laughs> and takes off towards where Kim went. Excellent. Okay. Some backwards jogs. Next to his sister. I hate you now. <laughs> exactly. Before you could turn and run, the crowd that was beating on his car turns on the three of you. So, body, 
for Bernardo, body for uh, Ingrid, and soul for X. Can I can I roll? Can I use the body of my Fiat to run them over? You got to get in it first. Okay. So you got to make the check. I rolled the one. one. I hate people. Uh, roll five. The okay. Spend one body to roll two. What am I rolling? What's the target number? Four. Four. All right. Uh, uh, fuck. Rolled two into one. Okay. You throw a guy to the ground. Mm-hmm. You try to be it. This is Bernardo. You try to be all like Daredevil. Do like a sick body flip. But what really happens is you both collapse to the ground and he ends up on top, hitting you in the face. Ugh. Uh, there's concrete under the back of your head, which is not pleasant. Mm. But you're Bernardo, oh. so, you know. Uh, and then one of them pushes uh, Ingrid. Ingrid falls. And you hear the uh, you hear the crack of a wrist injury. Ingrid cries out, and then Axel's eyes roll black, and uh, you know, whatever guttural cry Axel says that Axel wants to make, and a huge burst of energy comes out and hits everybody who isn't flat on the ground, sending them all flying 15 feet back. It also pushes Axel's car, Bernardo's car across the parking lot sideways. <laughs> people that got flung hit the ground and don't get up because if it has enough force to push a car you can imagine what it does to your internal organs. <laughs> Bernardo just does a double take like, what the fuck? Uh, and Axel's like sways a little but one hand goes to help pull Bernardo up and the other hand sort of scoops to try and help his sister up and he's okay, car, let's, let's get in the car. <laughs> uh, oh, gee, that you stole from uh, uh, Lirial earlier courses back out of you and into your sister whose wrist snaps back into place oh cool because she was like rolling around like holding her wrist that was broken um and um then uh she she gets up hey sis flexes it a little bit hey i don't i don't deserve people anymore and he actually like generally smiles Oh, so it's like, so Axel looks at Ingrid and says, "Hey, this is the first time I don't, I don't just hurt people." I mean, he sort of actually like has like a genuine smile on his face that he like actually healed your wrist. Uh, how many crystals did you put in his pockets, Ingrid? It was one per person. She was, she gave one to Bernardo, that and then she needs. Cracks, but you don't lose a soul point for the magic. Hmm. Crystal took the power, so you don't have to. But next time you cast a spell, he will lose soul point or take a weird. I gave it to Bernardo, not to Axel. Oh, and then Axel has to spend either a soul point or a soul, uh, take a weird. I'll spend. I'll spend a soul point. I hadn't gotten to Axel yet because I didn't know he was running after me. You know, if you were going, Axel, Axel is not leaving you alone. Uh, Bernardo, take uh, one body. Uh, another one? Yeah, you, you, the world is spinning and your ears are ringing and there's blood on the back of your head. Probably got to Oh. It's like a Tuesday night for Bernardo. Okay. <laughs> uh, get up. Get in the Fiat. Go, get in the car. I'll lead the way. And so uh, he's going to try to, like, sideswipe the, the people that are, like, banging on the SUV or whatever to clear them out of the way so that uh, Kim can get the SUV going and you know, she can follow us. Okay. I mean... SUVs being as they are, it's probably better if Kim's in the front at doing like the snowplow but with people thing. <laughs> no, no, Bernardo's in his own car trying to smash the people off the car you're hot wiring. Oh. Yeah, I'm they're just gonna. Trying to pull your, they're trying to pull you out. Uh, but while you're hot wiring, you have two people, one possessed, one not, trying to defend you, so you're gonna need Lyriel. And uh, rain to both roll body difficulty five. Can say Lirio, I just saw that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Wait, so did you say yes too? Why am I the only one getting shit here? Mine's a temporary bargain, Axel. I'm not yes. an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aaron's character is at the stage you were at before you said yes to forever. 
Mm -hmm. okay. Five. Success. Describe how you beat a dude down with a crystal. Huh. <laughs> Five. Rain on the will pull out the largest crystal that they had suggested to Ingrid, and just chucks it right at the guy's head. Yeah. You're possessed, so I want to hear you describe how you beat a motherfucker with another motherfucker. <laughs> so I, I think uh, she'll catch a wrist and snap it and then just pull it out of socket and then kind of swing them around like a t wet towel and then just wall up the one that uh, rains beating <laughs> with them. I feel underpowered. <laughs> Should have should have should have shouldn't invite an angel in apparently, Bernardo. <laughs> Holy crap! Uh, he had one. Just got created a crystal collection. Head with a giant chunk of crystal. The guy's head snaps back. A body comes down on the top of his chest, pile driving him into the ground. You both feel pretty good about yourselves till so you look up and see three more coming, and then a Fiat hits them. He one, one of the. <laughs> I was actually about to do that. You hear the little beep beep of the Fiat, and then a dude goes through the windshield. Another the other two go flying to the left and right. And the Fiat kind of spins a little, hits one, rolls over it, blows the Fiat's tire out. And the Fiat comes to a stop with the back bumper of the SUV, just as Kim gets it hotwired. Okay, time to switch cars and get in the SUV. <laughs> Uh, wow. Lyriel will uh, tip an imaginary hat. I'll be seat to the bodies. Be seeing y'all soon. <laughs> um, I, uh, as Ingrid gets into the SUV, she uh, puts a, a stone in everyone's pocket. Um, so everyone has now a protection room. Kim's gonna. Drive. Kim's gonna drive it like she stole it. Which, which you did. <laughs> exactly. Where are you going? Uh, Kim will say, "All right, where the fuck am I going?" Out of town. Out of town. No, Axel, we're going to don't make Orchard. don't make. No, we're, we're going Orchard. to Disney World. <laughs> uh, no, no, and no. Orchard. All right, let's go. A harrowing drive later. Come Is this car diesel? Because it's shot. Welcome, Raiders. <laughs> Welcome, Raiders. No, Welcome. he was announcing the raid. You can't punish him for that. <laughs> yeah. Watch me. Uh, no. uh, one harrowing ride later of the long driveway that goes to the orchard. It seems very quiet, which makes sense if all the cultists are ravaging from Silent Veil. Ingrid. But the air is ominous and foreboding. You know God is terrible, right? Um, Axel, we don't believe in God, so... I know, but he's just a terrible douche. So we really shouldn't, inv and since we don't believe in him, we shouldn't involve ourselves in his matters. We should just leave. So where are we on the kill Axel and try to bring him back without the soul angel thing in him? I'm not leaving while people are dying. I mean, she's got a point. Do your job, angel of protection. <laughs> You made a bargain, you made a deal, and that deal is with an entity that is about protection, so you should start living up to that, Axel. Protecting you is my deal. Well, that means I can go hog wild trying to stop some cultists then, right? <laughs> Using protection is not a strong suit, right, Bernardo? Elbow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got, you've got no comment. <laughs> I mean, Bernardo's probably not pregnant, so who knows? Inside Lyriel's head, I never said that Nephilim were all born with women. I. 
Is Bernardo a seahorse dad now? Is he a seahorse daddy? <clears throat> Uh, I don't know the reference, so I'm just going to say sure. Oh, uh, God! <laughs> male seahorses carry the babies instead of the, the, the female. The female. Oh, well, so the I females see. get pregnant, okay. but then they put it in back inside yes. the man, and the men yes. carry it. They, they, okay, the, the male seahorses carry the term, yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, stay tuned. Axel opens the door to the SUV and is like, if you're going to risk yourself, I will just protect you. And maybe them and he looks at like lyriel and rain and kim <laughs> probably her he like looks at kim for a second all right so let's go find out where these cultists um are doing we're doing i don't know it's a comp it's a compound it's an apple compound the orchard yeah, Axel just reaches burn. up to the apple tree and picks one and just Those probably aren't heirloom, or they are creepy heirloom because cultists. Creepy apples. They're creepy apples. They're creepy heirloom. Um. Okay. Uh, Kim, do you have an idea of where we should go in the compound? Fuck no. Follow the screaming. Yeah. Follow. See what you learn from the gas station. Three. You do feel like there is something, but it's not the center at the orchard. It's at the back end on the west side. Uh, on the same property. I will plow the SUV through the orchard to get over there. So you're plowing through the orchard trying to fit between trees, which are pretty well closely set together. You're like shearing metal and bark off. Apples hitting the roof like water. And you realize as you go farther into the orchard, there's no people. There's a lot of scarecrows. And that one just hopped off the post. And as you're all looking at that one, the car gets hit real hard from the other side. As another scarecrow hits the SUV and knocks it on its side. Oh. Uh, can I fuck with that scarecrow before it does that? Before? No. After, yes. <laughs> Oh, you mean <laughs> the one you were looking at, not the one that hit you? Yes, you can fuck with the one you yeah. were watching hop off the post. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck with that. I'm just we'll gonna destroy that motherfucker. That's a six. Okay, sacrifice. Well, this time the crystal does crack. Right, I'm I'm close to crack. Point. Everyone notices. Ah. Uh, I liked that one. I'm sorry, Ray. Scarecrow bursts into flames, charges towards mm -hmm. the SUV, but doesn't make it before too much of it is immolated and it collapses. Oof, I hear. And then you get knocked over. Just in time for you to orient yourselves, driver's side, a passenger side door gets ripped off the car and flung across the orchard and hits some tree and sticks in the side of it like it's sharp. Who is in the driver's side? Chaka. Side. Who is Chaka? I know well, Ingrid and Axel were in the back. I say I definitely elbowed Bernardo, so that implies I'm sitting next to him or able to do that from the back seat. <laughs> huh. Bernardo's a different car. No, we're all in the SUV. Uh, all in the SUV really now car. because yeah. the the, the Fiat's Fiat fucked. The Fiat's yeah, totally fucked. Oh, okay. Um. Rochambeau. <laughs> <Let's laughs> <take> All right. One, two, three. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Ambrose didn't didn't do it, or we can't see it. No, oh, I I said I'd take it. Oh. oh, you want to take the seat? Oh. Yeah. Oh, we were we were playing rock paper scissors for it. Okay. Rain. Rain gets grabbed by the front of the collar and launched. Oh. It makes Whee. that famous movie scream noise you hear in every movie ever. The Wilhelm ah. scream. There's <laughs> one body, Whee. Rain. Oh. Fuck. Oh. So, uh, that brings you down to zero body. Rain's body is burned. Rain is, and the wind is knocked out of Rain, and until someone intercedes, Rain cannot act or participate. 
once you uh, make a roll to get Rain back up, Rain can participate, but one body after that will kill him. These are scarecrows that jumped off the posts? Yes. Um, does Kim Kat have anything in the SUV we can use as a weapon? Uh, there's crystals everywhere, broken glass. Oh, sorry, Kim, go ahead. I'm sure there's a trail of crystals. <laughs> <laughs> If they're scarecrows, they're full of straw, and that is flammable. So let's set the fuckers on fire. Sure. Hmm. While they uh, congregate to set scarecrows on fire, uh, Ingrid is going to scurry over to Rain's body and use one of the Morning Star's gifts. So I'm going to need... Uh... Mind from uh, Kim and Bernardo. I'm going to need body from Ingrid, and I'm going to need soul from Axel to protect Ingrid as other scarecrows go to try to kill your sister. She runs through them like a gauntlet. Ariel, what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I like hop into head mode and be like, Hey, are, do these things count as living? Can we death touch these things? Everything rots, baby. Sounds mm -hmm. good. I'm going to go reach out and touch some scarecrows. Roll soul. But do you reach out and touch face? <laughs> Protection uh, more cracks, Lyriel, and you do not have to spend points to use magic. Okay. I will right. spend a... Ingrid rolls a two. Uh, I roll a two. <laughs> what did, that is uh, a six for me. Oh, Roll20 likes me tonight. That's another six. Glorious. Okay. Bernardo's like licking the zippo. Nothing's happening. Cursing under his breath. Kim's like, bitch, please. Takes uh, one of the crystals, scrapes it across a piece of metal on the dashboard, and lights uh, a rag on fire, which then she dunks into her flask that, of course, Kim would have. <laughs> tosses it in its air character roll, which bursts into flames. Nice. Uh, or however you want to describe that, if you want to describe that differently. That sounds great. Uh, <clears throat> Ingrid tries to scramble between the scarecrows. The two of them pick him up, her up one by each arm and look like they're about to play messy tug of war until uh, <laughs> Axel intercedes just before the joints pop out of place. Yeah, Axel just like absolutely fucking not. And just these sort of demonic dark wispy tendrils just just shred these sort of scarecrows. Uh, I can see absolutely. one on the left, Thunder. which makes uh, Ingrid fall and the one on the right loses its grip. Ingrid, you scramble over to Rain. What did you roll? For your soul, roll soul, sorry. I'm like, you didn't ask to? Three? Three. Okay. Uh, you were able to give one of your body to Rain. You lose one, Rain gains one. Rain now has one body. Oh. Is so. Okay. Instead of With giving the, up soul uh... or weird for the magic, you gave up the body point. Unless that takes you to zero, there's no sedan. Um, well, no, it's just... <clears throat> Never mind, I messaged you on the side. <clears throat> there are two scarecrows left. I got these. I'll take the flask that um, Kim used to light the first one. I'll take a swig of it, and then he'll get the, the, the lighter going, and I'll just spew it all over the, uh, the two remaining ones. Flamethrower. Of God. <laughs> of God. Okay, roll another body, Bernardo. Another body. All right, I'll spend one. So I got it down to two now. Uh, and... You actually gained two rain. The devil gave uh, a 
specific power is out that somebody actually wrote down. Hey. Yeah, three to five. Five is a success. You catch one of the remaining two on fire. There's one left who wants to deal with it. Oh, I didn't get my chance to do death touch. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes, do your death touch and describe it to us because you already pre-rolled. Okay, so yeah, I, I had a six for it. So yeah, I'm going to like uh, shove my hands into its chest cavity and dig them in deep and just lift it and hold it and watch it rot on top of me. <laughs> it happens to straw when it rots. <laughs> Mold. Real moldy and gross. <laughs> just kind of... Oof. All right, now you're running. Body checks, everybody. Oh, fuck. The trees themselves begin reaching for you, trying to lacerate you and slash you and scrape you. All right, that's a four for uh, Lyriel, a three E... Axel. What about Kim? I got another six. Nice. Two Damn. for Rain. What about Bernardo and uh, Ingrid? Uh, I rolled a three. I just leave Ingrid. What am I rolling again? Body check. Uh, sprinting for the tree. You have no more car. Oh. One. Oh, Jesus Christ, sister. Okay. I I am making your pact fucking worth it. <laughs> so Ingrid and uh, Rain take one body each from the trees, lacerated. Uh, you. I will take that damage with my okay. own body to protect her. Then you take the body damage. Mm, yeah, Axel will so put Rain himself in the system. You're down to one, Rain. Rain, I just gave you two. You finally arrived. Axel's used to the pain. Nice. Not as hey. as Bernardo. Kinky. <laughs> so Axel just sort of throws himself in the way of that to protect his sister. And we're running. Any, any idea how much further? You sprint through the orchard, following Kim the whole way. At the end is a very different tree than all the rest. It's very, very old, and it's very, very large. And the apples are different than the other apples in the orchard. They're pure white. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? And they're large. And, uh, like, the tree gives off a huge amount of age. And then there are two figures in the clearing between you and the tree because you just get to a halt at the edge of the clearing where you're still within the orchard. Like, everything around it is just rock and ash. The tree is growing beautifully. Le leaning against one of the trees... So, like, if you were going to walk out, there'd be a tree here and a tree here, and you're walking between them. Leaning against the one on this side is Lucy. Smirking. And Lucifer? standing uh, in front of the other tree facing you is a dude in a pure white suit with shades on. Just, like, legs slightly apart. Hands on his sword, tipped to the ground. The sword is on fire. I was thinking of asking where that sword was. Michael? Uh-huh. <laughs> right. And leaning against the tree, it's a scythe. Is who? A scythe. A scythe. Oh. Marcus. Who's the one in the... Not Michael in the, the white, but the other guy. Who was that? Lucifer. Lucy. Lucy. Uh, Okay. Lucy snickers and says, you all think that's Michael. That's not Michael. That's the guardian He's got angel. Michael's sword. That's the guardian angel, you know. Oh! Eden because that's the tree. Capital T, baby! I don't... 
I don't understand your American. Uh, yeah, this is sort of lost on when me. Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden, an angel was put there so they couldn't come back in. The flaming sword That's him. The tree that gave you the knowledge and everything. So this guy's just like a bouncer. Angel <laughs> bouncer, basically. Yeah. You guys distract him. I'm gonna make for the tree. Didn't you already get all that? Not enough. Look, Angel's oh. shiny. <laughs> I don't get it. Lucifer. I Lucifer was supposed to help us. Oh, weird. Weird. Lucy. Lucy lied to y'all. Hmm. <laughs> Never done that before. Uriel, can you stop being so full of yourself for just a moment? It'll lie to you. This is why neither side wants you. Here. My people did. Well, they're not my people anymore, clearly. Also, what's up, Uriel? Long time no see, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. Sis, I like it. Better looking. <clears throat> Too many swinging dicks in the good book. Temporary arrangement, uh, Morningstar. Why are you? This this is why I don't want either of you on the team. You are just so full of yourselves. Now that was that was oh, Lydia. You're full of something too, babe. <laughs> oh, what am I full of? Well, first Bernardo. Secondly, the thing you joined with. Well, your daddy sucks. So. Yeah, clearly. You Maybe you should have swallowed. I don't think that. I, I can um, I can send you up there, Axel, created? and you can show him how to. Yeah. If Axel. I wasn't playing his sister, I would tell you yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Axel. Come play. It's real serious. All the light exits the area. Um, can we Take can we shot. not? Can we not? Axel, mind your fucking manners. What are we swallowing? Crystals. Crystals. Oh, um, no, this one. Will be for that. She whispers over to Lyriel, Isn't that the thing that you needed on the tree? Yeah, it totally is. Lucy definitely can't hear us whisper. No, I can't. I don't. Okay. Can we have it? <laughs> I don't care if you take it. Good luck. I'm Good. not here to stop you. I'm here to see what happens. Oh. 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 That, that guy is. That guy kicked me out of Eden. <laughs> that was a good snake, though. That was a real good snake. Just ask Eve. And, oh, no. I, I'm okay. Um, Mr. Guardian, sir? She Does he talk? He ignores you. <laughs> like a British royal guard. Oh, fuck. Um, someone who knows. So what's what's the thing? What's the deal? How do you work with the Guardian? Would I know anything about this, uh, considering I am now merged with a former angel? So, uh, in the Bible... Michael replaced Lucifer as God's most favorite. Not the most powerful angel. The favorite. Not the same thing. Hold on one second. Uh. This is Jophiel. Mm -hmm. Jophiel is older than Michael and stronger. Jophiel just has a charisma rating of one dot. Michael has five dots. <laughs> Jophiel? So there's no uh, negotiating with them, is what you're saying. No. Jophiel gets a job. Jophiel does the job. Yeah, and where's God now? I'll ask him. In what in any language that I think he would know. 
freaked out. Well, okay. What's the job exactly? Keep people out of the garden. What else? Keep your kind out of the garden of Eden. Away from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Your so kind. You how to be like God. Your kind. I t- as someone who no, is this now. Is, this is the GM talking, not in, in character. Oh, okay. Jawfield says nothing to anyone. That, that no, okay, but so if it says. It, I am not entirely human anymore, so I'm going to take a couple steps if I know that its job is to keep humans away from the apples. Please be careful. As soon as you cross the threshold into the ash, uh, if you were human, I would say you feel real sick. It's weird. But there's an angel inside of you that's part of you now. It's not even inside of you. You are half angel now, and you realize this is radioactive. Mm-hmm. Like Geiger Counter 7. <laughs> you all should stay back. This is bad stuff. Oh, that's going to kill you, too. Your body can't handle it, even with an angel in it. Yeah. He'll take several steps back. That's it's not lower good. for you. This okay. ash is not good. It's will kill us all. One of us has to retrieve the scythe. Why? To need to... Is is that what we have to do? Why? Yes. Why do we have to retrieve this scythe? This is Savannah. Like, is that what we have to do? Yeah. To like, stop? I just look at my sister. How like, do we? St- are we just trying? To- to destroy this, the this orchard. Will, this will be both <laughs> Lithia and Uriel. You know that the scythe can kill anything, right? Yes. What are we looking to kill? That thing points to Jophiel. He won't let us do what we need to do, which is to destroy this this garden, this hideous garden. Is that what we have to do? I'm like, I'm like looking at my sister, like it's pretty much, we need to do it. I kind of lost the translation here, like. I am utterly confused. Okay. So TLDR, there's a whole bunch of cultists killing people in Solemn Vale. Um, there is uh, the scythe of death uh, sitting there in front of us. There's also the, the tree of Eden um, in radioactive ground. Uh, and a guardian with a chilling. flaming sword. And Luce Ridge is chilling. Lucifer is inconsequential in this oh, yeah, he is. encounter. Hell like, yeah! Know, if you ask him in character what's going on, his ass will tell you. Nobody has yet. No, like this is Ingrid talking uh-huh. because she is confused as well as Savannah uh-huh. on what the fuck to do. Well then, yes. Lucy giggles and says, "These these bitches used to be mine, but they were swayed by Azrael, pretended to be one of mine." Obviously, everything bad must be me, right? You guys are such idiots. You can't even believe fucking anything. Looks at Bernardo when he says that. <laughs> if you're gonna be saved by saying Hail Mary, the fuck? Come on. Anyways, uh, so Asriel helped them steal the site, which they used not to summon me, but to summon a gateway to Eden middle of their fucking orchard from that stupid cave. Oh. I was too late to stop them. Because they want to use that scythe to reap the tree. They want to kill the tree of knowledge? It will prevent any human from ever having any chance of ascending ever again, or what ascension means in this case is becoming like God. And that's a bad thing, because why? Because then only the angels can grant dominion, specifically Azrael, if he wins the war. Mm. Kyle Azrael, forever! Uh, not really in- I mean, we don't- we definitely don't like God, but I don't know if we really like Azrael. But if we eat one of those things, we ascend. I have no idea what happens. I Wait, did Lucifer? I convinced, those, I convinced Adam and Eve, that was not really their names, to eat that shit, but they didn't do it in front of me. I had to go distract God so he wouldn't notice. Yeah, they don't tell you everything in the book. Of course they don't, it's a book. That was our first bet. Joke was like our 30th. 
the fucking sucker that guy was. I'm still unclear about what we're really supposed to be doing here. The scythe doesn't have enough power yet to reap the tree, so they're feeding it souls from Solemn Vale. By the score. What are you supposed to do? I don't know. I'm just here to see what happens. This is out of my hands now. I'll help you if I can, though. <laughs> Alright, so you can hit on my sister more? I mean, maybe you can help her. Points at Kim, who has by this point reached the tree. Part of her oh my is god! Actually, slouching off like she's rotting away from the ring. Oh. Uh, I am yeah. running over to Kim and trying to pull her away. Nope, not allowed. Oh, but Bernardo grabs me. <laughs> okay, I have a crystal when she comes back. I don't think that's going to help. Are you really just not going to let me save her? He like looks up at Bernardo. No response. I want to reach a hand out and try and use my protection magic on Kim to protect her. I am an angel of protection. Nephilim of protection. Pretty soon you're going to be able to pour Kim into a bottle, so like, <laughs> I don't know how much you can possibly protect her at this point. Before I answer that question, Kim, <laughs> you're about to collapse. You have a choice because you've made it to the tree. The angel hasn't done anything yet, but you haven't done anything yet. You can go for an apple and see if you're fast enough and lucky enough dying from radiation poisoning. Or you can grab this apple. Oh. Not both. <laughs> apple. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, which makes uh, sense. Uh, Axel, full <laughs> soul. Difficulty 10. Okay, I was just about to say, I think I'll probably be spending some points on this. Remind me the difference between spending weird and soul, sir, ST. Uh, you actually subtract the soul points till they hit zero. Weird, you add weird till it hits 10. Either way, it's a bad end result. Going to spend a point of soul to get another dice. Do I have to declare spending weird before or after? Or I want to say I spend two weird. Eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Okay. Hey, Cthulhu, can you check your sides for me? I see. What are you planning, sister of mine? Uh, nothing. I am messaging Aaron about my tentacle hottie for Saturday, of course. <laughs> uh -huh. Sister whom I love so much and burn the world for you, sister. Hmm. So that's a 10 to try and save. <laughs> I actually kind of like her. All right. <clears throat> Both parties accept this? Based on the side messages that I got, yes. So uh, Olivia will walk up to Ingrid, like, I need you to say yes and then hold my hand, even though it's going to hurt real bad. Um, two seconds. Um, she walks up to Bernardo. Um, someone's going to be real mad in probably about five seconds. Um, so you should... Um, keep your end of the bargain um like we talked about next to the woods um 
and um probably get that angel out of him at some point thanks and she kisses his cheek axel is like physically being held by bernardo right now and it's like looking at his sister like what the fuck are you saying spells on uh, Mm -hmm. him and paying no attention (laughs) can't multitask even as a demon yep um kisses bernardo's cheek and says it would have been fun um and grabs uh lariel's hand ciao all right I'm gonna, I'm gonna clutch it tight and then just death touch away. Yep. <laughs> oh, shit. Every stat you have left, burn them all and roll that as a dice pool. I... Whatever your stats are that's left in body, soul, and mind, burn them all and spend it as a dice pool. Plus one day six for your normal roll. Either you're gonna get the apple and eat it, or you're gonna super die. So you might as well burn it all. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. All right. So roll 20 has been giving me sixes all night. And I knew, I knew at some point it was going to give me a one. And it just did. Wait, what about the rest of your uh, stat points that you haven't spent? Bitching about the roll right now. Oh, okay. Uh, Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, my stats add up to seven. So that is a total of eight. Uh Eight D6. No, 76. That's uh, boons. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dreadus gave you a boon, Rachel. I roll 76. 8d6 if you and want, because Dreadus gave you a boon. 8d6, so roll 8d6. 31. 31. What was your weird at? 9. Okay. That's appropriate. That was three sixes. You reach for the scythe. <laughs> you reach for the scythe, and you're like, "Psych, bitch!" And you grab the apple. Uh, Reaper, or the the angel of death plunges the sword through you, and like pulls, and you're like two pieces now, half, half out of half. <laughs> you're sliding apart when the protection magic from Axel hits you. Long enough for you to take one bite. You look around. And everyone can see your eyes, and it's like, I know everything. And then Kim disappears. You're weird as dead. Mm. You don't know if that was like, turned invisible on purpose, popped out of reality. You'll never know. But Kim is uh, ScarJo at the end of that movie where she ate all the drugs. <laughs> Lucy. Yeah. yeah. Lucy. <laughs> Kim is gone. What happens to Ingrid? And then, yeah. and then Lariel touches Ingrid and Ingrid collapses, instantly dead. Heart stops, brain gone. What did you do? Bernardo, let me go. <laughs> uh, oh no. Ingrid, you now have 10 weird also, but you can retain control for a moment for the scene. Because now you're like Supernatural Reaper on the other side. Nobody can see me. Uh, no, I don't... but you can see them. Oh, I'm gonna go up to the tree. You can also see Kim just kind of walking away because she is invisible. But you can't reap her. She's beyond death now. <laughs> wow. Hi, Kim! Have a good time! <laughs> Bye, <And> sweetie! I... <laughs> <laughs> um, I grab the scythe um, and I face off against the guardian. The guardian doesn't give a shit about the scythe. doesn't even look at you. Oh no, I'm killing the guardian so the rest of them can get to the tree without getting cut in half by a sword. Uh, the scythe just like floats up into the air to the rest of you. The guardian uh. still doesn't look at you. Lyriel, what did you do? But he smirks. It smirks. She's gone. Okay. You're one of us now. Give it a minute. Your mind will kick in. You'll remember. Like in your head, the thing it doesn't move. Oh yeah. And then the knowledge does hit you. Eat from the tree. The tree moves. That's one of its protections. It's about to disappear, which technically will save Solemn Vale. Unless you want to do something about it, like I don't know, reap the tree. You can still hit the angel too. I'm thinking. <laughs> 
If it helps any, Jaffiel is the oldest warrior in creation. I'm not going to win that fight. And I'm a newly minted angel of death. What could go wrong? Um, <laughs> well, I guess I, I, Kim's brain exploded, so... Um, What's better for humanity? She asks in her head. The guardian angel says, God's will. Uriel says, I don't care. Can we just go home? <clears throat> the angel inside uh, Baffle, uh, Bellafor inside Axel says, free will. It's in the whole book, the whole lie, but it's a lie. If you kill that tree, it really will be free will. Does Lucifer say anything? Lucifer uh, tells you, if you reap that tree, you will be enslaved to just a different god forever. At least this one lets you do whatever the hell you want. But what if you just reaped all the fruit instead? Look outside the box, that's me. What if you just cut down all the apples? All of these are way above Ingrid's original pay grade. Um, why doesn't she, Why doesn't she ask Adun? Oh, yeah. Adun, she is goddess of apples. I I ask my own goddess. In my in my noggin, if I can still pray. You can. And she says, I was wondering when you were going to talk to me. It's almost like all you guys, and she just blow party, forgot that most of you aren't actually Catholics. Jeez. This is just a paradigm. <clears throat> it's a tree. I'm a goddess of nature. I don't know. What do you want the tree to do? Make it do something. You're not human anymore. You're free of all that. Sure. That Christian angel says you're a reaper, but maybe you're just a spirit of entropy now, of service to me, to nature. I'm a fickle bitch. Be fickle. Um. You feel like you could use the site to do some wild shit if you wanted, like ignore the tree altogether because that's Christian bullshit you don't care about. Maybe you could make the earth rise up and take all the cultists and suck them into the ground. Um, Maybe nature could rebel and all the predators suddenly decide how long they'll look Okay. Okay. Um, duck rebellion. Duck rebellion. So, <laughs> my poor duck. Who's going to take care of my duck? Feral duck. <laughs> there were so many ducks in that town. She um, places your duck. Uh, she places her hand um, on the tree. Uh, not the one holding the scythe. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and channeling Aduna instead of angel nonsense um, or gods um, or god. Um, she um, starts to have the entire orchard crumple. And then as it reaches the edge of the um, the orchard, as like everything basically starts to like crumple into the earth, um, the tree of Eden connects to all the trees in Solemn Vale. And all of the cultists get sucked into the ground. And totally the church collapses for no reason whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> and all over their graves new tr new apple trees sprout <laughs> and a brand new apple tree is now where the catholic church used to be <laughs> <laughs> after that happens uh Uh, 
light floods the area. And the, to you, it looks very much like a close encounter of the fourth kind. But it doesn't affect you because you're all still at the edge of the clearing. But to Ingrid, who has now become one with a nature goddess, it's actually more like those who come from the sky in Native American belief return called by what you did to try to save the world from the corruption of all of this colonial bullshit. Ingrid is whisked away to somewhere better with a weird intent. <clears throat> somewhere How does everybody else react calm. to that? <laughs> uh, Axel is screaming and crying in Bernardo's arms as he is looking at his sister's, sister's corpse, shouting things like, you promised. And no, and not her. The four of you that are left, the scene is yours with the screaming and the crying. <clears throat> the tree disappears oh. and the angel with it. The ground is left to ash, but it's not radioactive anymore. All the cultists are gone now. The Solid Veil is no longer under attack. What about Lucy? Is he gone too? No, Lucy is still there, smirking. Slow clapping. Uh, I always have loved the study of metaphysics. It's really nice to see them applied practically in the world. Your sister did the work. I'm glad my lectures reached someone. You should what? probably run. <laughs> Bernardo tells Fuck. Lirio, run very far away oh i thought we were going to fix axel before this was all over are we not doing that Axel's i don't know if he can in bernardo's arms i don't think he wants to be fixed axel you and uh the thing inside of you do have common cause the thing inside Murdering. of you didn't betray you it's just you tried to help someone else instead of your sister you tried to be benevolent you tried to hide you tried to help these goddamn meat monkeys that's what they did Revenge, that's what you want. He is just glaring daggers at Lyriel. What's your like weird damage, much. Axel? Uh, seven. Mm. Mm. Take those last three points and you can escape. Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not stupid, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy says, well, if you don't need me anymore, I'm going after that Kim chick. Her and I got stuff to talk about. <laughs> Have fun. It's almost like <laughs> Rachel likes to like just have in games with Lucifer because like <laughs> at the demon game she went to LA and was like well, <laughs> went to the bar. Uh, I mean, this is also how Tyler's running it, so because in this reality, who whatever power is for whatever belief is most prominent is reality. This wasn't Lucy forever. It used to be Prometheus. So <laughs> Lucy disappears unless one of the four of you specifically stops it. Nah. Well, all right then. Uh, put me down, Bernardo, and let me kill her. It's not going to do anything about her. You're not going to bring her back. It's not going to make you feel better after you kill her. Um... You know, since I'm like uh, um, an entity now, uh, can I can I can I uh, squeeze some space out of my brother's noggin to talk to him? Well, you you are ascended. You are essentially a demigod, so yes. <laughs> you and Kim are essentially beyond humanity. Cool. Um, you like hear like a little tinkling of bells in the back of your mind, um, and then Ingrid's voice. Axel, I did it for you. You don't need to be bad, mad at her. She did what I asked. They were We've right. all made a deal to protect you, Axel. He hears Bernard. He's sort of like, a lot of the fight goes out of him. He sort of just like slumps against Bernard as he hears his sister's voice in his head. And he's like, always right i'd be the i'd be the death of you no technically she was but um 
it's not your fault. It's not because of you. This cult was going to do this regardless if you and I showed up into town or not. But now I am more. And I can help more people. And plant more apple trees. Bernardo will take care of you. Because that is what he and I agreed upon. While you were busy. Um, so. Have fun. Have a lot of kinky sex. Um, and have a good life. Mm. I pray will you answer. I think I'm technically a goddess now, so yes. Also, hi, I'm hanging out with a Duna now. Oh, <laughs> like in a, like a, in a, you know. Like... No, I'm, no, okay, no, okay. no, I'm, no. I am a demi goddess of her. I'm a nature god now. Okay, that's kind of cool. Okay, that's that's not that bad. Okay, are you are you happy? Um, I don't have to take those midterms anymore. <laughs> I think I get all A's this semester because you died. Is that how that works? We were roommates, and that sort of is a thing weird um but um make a shrine for me in the family orchard so that way mom and dad can talk to me yeah okay that's a weird sentence now that i think about it but anyways but don't let people get too crazy about it like i don't need like i don't know i don't need just gonna be the family yeah and maybe Bernardo. Maybe I can bug him in his sleep. That'll be fine. He can have more voices in his head. It's what he's always wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I love you. I love you too. And there's no need to be sorry. Okay? Can I just like punch Lirio in the face at least once? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> Axel, this re-sparks your original faith, which tells you the original word for demon just meant spirit. You are, in fact, merged with a very powerful nature spirit of protection. Demon, but maybe you can make it remember its older nature. Mm. You are something more. They always said the uh, the old leaders, the ones who led the, the people, mm. would merge with nature spirits. That is how they knew how to lead. Yeah. Mm. You pick a word, priest, shaman, druid, whatever. Maybe that's you now. Something like that. So I want to hear the epilogue. First, for Bernardo. What does mm. this do to your faith? What happens to Bernardo? Who is actually allowed to leave Solemn Vale if he so chooses. Shattered in, uh, version of reality. Well, I think ever, ever since the exorcism that completely changed him because he had no longer had this thing that was driving him in the back of his mind so i think now uh instead of having this rigid discipline for uh you know the vision uh now he's free to pursue his own life and his own happiness so does that um, happiness include axel it does if he would have if he would have him of course he would totally understand if he said fuck off <laughs> He better think listen to his sister and have a fucking happy life with kinky sex. <laughs> <laughs> I think, think Axel is willing to try. He wants to try. Yeah. He would apologize for what happened to his sister, but um, he's obviously changed. He's a different person now, and, and so is he. So I think now they don't need uh, to feel pain to be stronger or anything like that so he would he would take the silas off of him and say you don't need this anymore you're already strong enough without any of this yeah and you try cool. that's enough for an epilogue yeah, happily ever after this is reality but you tried and that's what matters it just gets happy as long as it can be as long yeah. as it's healthy what happens to lyriel that's the last <laughs> what what sex what's lyriel's <laughs> rain what does temporary deal actually mean? 
Um, I mean, I suppose that dis- depends on whether Uriel's willing to bounce or not. Um, but in her end, it was purely a temporary deal. It was fun. <laughs> it, it was fun having those powers, but she knows better than to make those kind of deals. She literally taught this shit in school. <laughs> um, Uriel I do... will, in fact, not fight you. Lyriel was here to stop the second war and did. I think I think it will. Uh, her syllabus will be altered forever in in uh, will in mage mage of mage the ascension terms where it's like all of this is just nonsense we put on them. They're all these kind of ephemeral entities that we put names to and powers to, and maybe they do exist. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your weird at? What's your soul at? My weirds at four. I have five soul remaining. Oh wow. Yeah, so you basically escape consequence-free if you want. Hell yes! Finally, I survived Solomonville. Yeah, walk <laughs> away. It took it took several shots, but you made it. Uh, what about rain? Uh, start a cult. Start a cult. Wait, <laughs> survive? Needs a new cult to tend the apples. Um. Uh, I destroyed that orchard. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. It was gross. It was a culty orchard. It had needed to, to go. Rain it's only has cult. five weird five and weird. has five soul left. It's perfect. Um, That's the perfect good to start a new cult. Well, do whatever rain wants. Rain's going to start a cult of ducks. <laughs> Solemn Vale has you forever. <laughs> One of your ducks has to be named Ingrid, and she probably should be the the matron. Oh yeah, no, Rain totally names a duck after each and every person who is part of this party, and thinks that the people have pieces of their souls inside the ducks. Encourage all of our creepy GMs on Horrible Tales to run Solemn Vale, but I do decree as the first Solemn Vale GM that Solemn Vale must have a crystal shop that is run by Rain. Surrounded by ducks at all times. This is required. <laughs> required. <laughs> Just like the bar with the other characters is required. Yes. Ducks do a strange march at midnight JJ's down the street. Bar. <laughs> Ingrid, do you take your eternal rest or do you eventually reincarnate? Try this again. <laughs> um. I wasn't done, but I did what I had to do. Um, so I reincarnate. Okay. Reincarnate as our kid. Then... I'm the not gonna reincarnate as your love child. Gross. <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll find a place for that reincarnation. And last but not least, Kim. As the new Cain on this planet, when does your story end? So she just ate the fruit. She didn't kill anybody. No, but I mean, you are eternal and you understand everything from the beginning, which we're not even going to get into that. (laughs) Uh, I think she probably needs to spend like a century or so just processing and learning how to function with all that knowledge. But, uh, you know, eventually she becomes exactly what uh, Uncle Brannigan wanted her to be. She wanders the world and kills monsters and empowers uh, random uh, vagabonds and wastrels like, hey, want to know how to kill a werewolf? Here's how. Mm. Oh, I love it. Because, uh, yeah, it's not just about her. It's about sharing what she now knows. Oh, and eventually uh, going to war against heaven. (laughs) I think Axel transfers universities because it's too painful to stay where he was and he definitely uh, goes to Libya's university and takes every one of her classes. Beautiful. I I was going to add a little tidbit myself and say uh, she looks for students that uh, take to her studies really well to teach them real fucking magic. (laughs) Excellent. And that's end spring. Someday we will do Summer of Strange. We don't know what day or what time slot, but it'll happen. And eventually, maybe someone else will pick up the torch and run Solemn Vale too. 
coinciding stories. But till then, there are lots of other cool things our show do all the time. On Monday, we have uh, Curse of Sonia, which is the Curse of Straw Gender Flip at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, starting next week on uh, Monday, also at the 11 p.m. slot, Octung Cthulhu. Horror in the Ice. What's the actual name of the story? Black Ice. Black Ice. Uh, which will run for several weeks or a few weeks until Eric is ready for Doom Season 3. Uh, on Tuesdays, we have Coriolis, The Third Horizon at 9 p.m., Mercy of the Icons. On Wednesdays, Defenders of Tomorrow, for as long as Sean can avoid playing Transformers, and then Transformers more than meets the eye, 9 p.m. Eastern. On Thursday, Dark Sun at 9 p.m. Armies of Yurik have not been defeated, but an alliance has been struck in a ceasefire as the heroes move on to something more epic, slaying the dragon tier. On Friday, uh, at 10 p.m., we would normally have Traveler, but not this week. Next week, at 5 p.m., Children of Fear, Pulp Cthulhu, followed by Traveler at 10 p.m. On Friday, on Saturday this week, uh, Strange Aeons, Pathfinder, converted to 2E at 9 p.m., book one begins. And on Sunday, Hunter the Reckoning, 5th edition, Roadhouse Blues continues at 9 p.m. Definitely come and check them all out. Not Denizens of Solemn Vale, because only one of you got stuck in the final tale. Tell us what cool things you do in and out of our show and where we can find you. Between now and next Monday night. Hey, I'm Eric at Modern Recluse Online, and uh, you can find me here on Thursday for Dark Sun. It was so short. Why is it so short? <sighs> well, hope you've enjoyed Solomon Vale. You can find me all over the internet as Sam Changeling. You can find me on Natsy at Thornkind. And you can find Rain worshipping ducks and having a crystal cult with the giant crystal duck. There's a crystal duck. was also very short uh hey i'm k you can find me at critical k with two k's on the bird app and i uh highly recommend you give that a follow and keep an eye on it i've got some very uh antithetical to these kinds of projects coming up some uh, very soft sweet lovely content as we head into the fall for uh something that's not horror for a change, which we love horror, but it's nice sometimes to just be like a cute little deer folk, maybe, who likes to garden. Uh, yeah, keep an eye for that. Hello, I have been Kim. I am back to being Rachel. Uh, you can find me Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere. Uh, you will see me next. Uh, normally, I am on the Friday show, Traveler. Uh, but we are off this week, so you will see me next on Sunday, uh, playing Hunter. Before that, you will see me over on Plastic Age Plays, playing some D&D. And, uh, yeah, catch me here next week for Session Zero of Hakthun Cthulhu, uh, World War II Meets the Mythos, using Modiphius's 2D20 setting. Should be a lot of fun. Hello, I was, uh... Livia slash Uriel slash Lyria. Uh, I am also known as Aaron and or Greek Cthulhu on the interwebs. Um, you can next find me tomorrow for Coriolis and then also on Wednesday for Defenders of Tomorrow. And then I think that's it for me for the week, which is glorious after the two weeks of Love Your Rebellion. <laughs> is that still active, Tyler? No. Nope. Close to midnight. And hi, I am Savannah. You can find me online as Miss Mazima Fox. Um, I played uh, a twin sister who ascended into goddesshood. Uh, you can find me tomorrow for Coriolis, um, where I play a rich bitch fighter pilot, um, but she's not as rich bitch as Garnet. She's actually nice. Um, and then you can find me on Thursday playing Sake, our Eric Hoker Ranger in Dark Sun. I'm 
I am Elder Checkers Online. I can be found next uh, <laughs> running Coriolis tomorrow night and then all over the place. So, once again, we'd like to give a very special thanks to Miu, Epidemic Sound, uh, Insomnium Music, and myself for all the sounds you heard in tonight's game. Thanks to Roll20 Tabletop for providing an excellent virtual platform that we use to run many games. Last but not least, a heartfelt thanks to all of you, our ride or die listeners who stay to the end for both tuning in and experiencing this story with us to its very delayed end. Until next week, stay spooky. Stay out of Solid Fail. Good night. <laughs>